Hello everyone. This is Paul Lucas inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions. Proudly we hail. And now, another proudly we hail, one of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Paul Lucas, and presented transcribed coast to coast in cooperation with this station by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Paul Lucas. Thank you, Kenneth Bengtner. Ladies and gentlemen, our play is entitled Prelude for Eva. The scene, Europe, the time today. The story, a tale of international intrigue and danger. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment after this short but very important message. You young men who graduated from high school this year, there's a chance for you to get ahead fast in the expanding United States Army. Visit your United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today and learn all the details. Do it now. And now with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, to all outward appearances, one of the world's most successful concert pianists, known only to a few as one of the free world's most successful counter-espionage agents. Your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production of Prelude for Eva. They said of him that his only love was music. He cared not one whit for country, for political ideals, for mankind. He was quoted as remarking, it made no difference who heard him play or who published his music. In fact, he'd play for the devil himself if the devil paid the price of admission. A cold, haughty, arrogant figure of a man who carried himself like a king and looked up to no one. But whenever people heard Stefan Donner play, they forgot what they knew and disliked about him. They became lost in the beauty of his music, and so almost forgave his attitude in a world where attitude had become the keynote. And always, those who heard him play asked themselves, how could such an unfeeling man as Stefan Donner touch the heart of mankind with his music, when his fellow man seemed to mean nothing to him? Oh, now, what the devil is this? Will you please stop that gargling rink? I told you I didn't want to be disturbed. Well, I beg pardon, sir, but the police are here. They'd like to have a word with you. The police? Idiots. What do they want with me? Tell them to go away. Well, I think it might be best to have a word with them, sir. Only take a moment. Ah, all right, all right. Show the gentleman in. Are our papers all in order? Oh, everything's in order, sir. Well, then let's get it over with. Can you please step in here? Well, gentlemen... I must say you are prompt. I was in Prague over two hours before your compatriots there paid me a call. Here, it's just one hour. <laughs> you flatter us, Sir Donner. We pride ourselves on efficiency. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Inspector Timko. This is Major Klaus. We are sorry to intrude, and we won't take much of your time. Charmed. Won't you sit down? Bring, get the papers. No, no, that won't be necessary. That's all been checked. I see. Well, then what is it? Tickets? <laughs> no, I'm able to procure those also, even though I think your music sometimes tends toward the, the decadent. Oh, so you are a music critic as well as a policeman. Well, I can hardly spare you the time to discuss music right now. You're in a very bad humor, Herr Donner. That is correct. I have a concert to give tonight. I have much practicing to do, and my time is being wasted. Would you tell me, please, why? It is never a good idea to be in bad humor here. This is a happy place. We want people to laugh and be gay. When they're not, they make us unhappy. And when we're unhappy... That we... will do, Major. The Major doesn't understand artistic temperament as I do, Herr Donner. 
So you must forgive him. Now, would you mind getting to the point, please? You are on a concert tour, is that correct? I am certainly not out hunting unicorns, Inspector. I notice you are a comedian as well as a musician. According to your itinerary, you were not due to play here until next week. Originally, you planned to be in Dresden at this date. We are, of course, honored that you will play here sooner than expected, but we are also curious as to the reason for your sudden change in plans. Well, I will tell you, Inspector, I am not really a musician at all. I am a secret agent who was sent here to steal your brain because the people I work for are curious to know how anything so small could fit into anything so large. They think they may be able to make a bomb out of it. Is there any need to be insulting, Herr Donner? I've asked you a civil question. All I wish in return is a civil answer. And if you can't give us one, perhaps we can teach you a new tune to play. Ah, all right. Let us be civil, but let us be quick. You want to know why I came here instead of Dresden as previously arranged? If you will take the time to study a map, you will see that Dresden is much closer to the Swiss border than your fair metropolis. And as I planned to do some skiing in Switzerland as soon as this tour is finished, I had my itinerary changed so that Dresden would be my last stop before I take a much-needed vacation where I won't have to perform before clowns and answer the stupid questions of jackasses. Now, does that answer your question? For the time being. Good. Then my men will show you to the door. It's been a pleasure. I see here, Donna. That will do, Major. Good afternoon, Herr Donna. Until we meet again. I don't understand why you put up with it. If I'd have been in if charge... If you'd been in charge, what he said might have been true. What do you mean? About jackasses. You'll never be a success in this business. Until you learn, Major, that you don't land the fish with the club. You play him gently and carefully. You think he's the man? I think it's possible because I think anything is possible. But it won't be long one way or the other before I'll know. You took care of the other business? He'll be followed from the time he steps out of his hotel room until the time he comes back. Good. <laughs> what a fellow he is. What a lovely fellow. Find any ring? Two in there, sir. One in the bedroom. There may be others. I don't think so. I was very thorough. Well, I'm sure you were, but while we are here, you should want to tell me anything important. We'd best do our talking in these sacred confines. Shall I uh, run the tub just to make sure? No, it won't be necessary. Did you leave the microphones just as they were? Oh, exactly, sir. Well, they aren't always, sir. Possibly. They are suspicious, but then they are always that. It's up to get very touchy before we are done, Rink. Oh, it's been touchy before, but then we've always managed. That man Simcoe or Timco is nobody's fool. But then, neither are you, sir. <laughs> Rink, if your confidence could do this job, we'd have nothing to worry about at all. Anyone here? No, they are. All right, all right. Put out the lights, quick. There isn't much time. Here, I'll get this one. There. Where have you been the last two weeks? You, you just suddenly disappeared. What happened? No time for that now. Ever, you've got to help me. I'm not who or what I seem to be. Hmm? I've got some information that has to be passed on. That's very important information, and the secret police are hot on my heels. Oh, really? What have you... Don't interrupt. I hate to bring you into this. It means you risk your life. Now, it's for something, well, something we both believe in. Uh. What, what must I do? You've got to go to Stefan Donner's concert Ste tonight. Stefan Donner? You mean the great... Yes, yes. You, you take this ticket. You go to the concert. Mm -hmm. When it's over, you take your program to be autographed. Mm -hmm. When he's autographing it, you say to him, I thought you played the Beethoven concerto magnificently. Oh, wait, please, this, this is just a little confusing. I'm I sorry, Ever. There isn't time to go into detail. I'll have something that Donner has to cut to get. That's why he's here. The concert is incidental. You mean Stefan Donner? Yes, yes. One of the best. 
never have guessed it. Uh, let's hope that nobody else does. Now, while I try and lead the hounds away from the sin, this is what you must do. A big house ring? It fills a capacity, sir. Are our friends present? In a box with some others like them. <laughs> Let's hope they enjoy my playing. <laughs> Even they should enjoy that, sir. Oh, how many will be at the party afterwards? Oh, about uh, 250. Oh, that should be enough. <laughs> this dressing room reminds me of the one in Munich, Rink. So cluttered up with microphones, it resembles a large ear. I trust Inspector Timko will be enlightened by our conversation. I trust so, sir. I suppose I've kept them waiting long enough. The orchestra is beginning to look slightly itchy. Stand here in the wings ring. Yes, sir. When it's over, be ready for most anything. I don't think Willie would be fool enough to come here, but then Willie is mad as a hatter. Not that mad, sir. Well, Rink, we who are about to die salute you. <laughs> uh, I, I'll be watching, sir. I thought you played the Beethoven Concerto magnificently. And how else would you expect me to play it, madam? But I, I just wanted to convince you. No, 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 I'm afraid nobody is next. I've had enough of this. One more, what please. good does it do to you to have my name on your program? I'm sorry I ever consented to this foolishness. I've had enough. Out of my way, out of my way. He didn't arrive, sir. Not Willie, he sent a lady friend. I don't like it. It could be a trap. Uh, uh, which one was she, sir? The pretty one in black. Uh, Her eyes looked innocent, but then so have others. But uh, if they caught Willie, sir, could they make him talk? They can make anyone talk, Ring. Anyone. Yeah, but even if Willie talked, he'd tell them something that wasn't quite right, so you'd know. Mm, yes, he would, and that's what I'll find out at the party. But I still don't like it, Ring. It was planned too quickly. To a man like Tim Coe, there must be something obvious about the whole thing. Just consider. It's almost obvious if you look at it in the right light. This man, Willie, he steals the papers. He leads us a merry chase, and finally we pin him down here. It's too dangerous for him to try and run further, so he goes to Earth. Now it's up to someone to come to him and relieve him of his burden. But that could be any one of a thousand people. But it isn't. It's only one. But which one? It's too tricky for the usual agent because we're watching. And Willie might not trust him anyway. Might think he was one of our men. So it's got to be someone who is above suspicion. Above all suspicion, who but our friend, Stephen Donner. But he's not the only man in the city who is traveling through with the correct papers. It might be that businessman from Paris, or the one from Florence, or that woman. Oh, any of those people are easily watched. Anyone approaching them is also. You know that as well as I. All right then, Major. Use your brains. Stephen Donner played before a tremendous audience tonight. He signed autographs, which is unusual for him. And now he's agreed to attend this party, which is even more unusual. But Brunner was not there. We know. But do we know if one of Willie's friends was? Nothing was exchanged during the autograph. Identification may have been. What about Donner's background? There's nothing there. That's true. But I'm not interested in background right now. Ah, uh, I cannot understand this sort of work. <laughs> Good of you to admit it, Major. Well, before the night's over, perhaps I'll be able to prove my point to you. Uh, excuse me, sir. Well, what is it? Willie Brunner tried to swim the elm, sir. The guards think they got him. Think? Don't they know? He disappeared under the ice. It's impossible to recover his body. Impossible nothing. If his body's in that river, I want it. And I don't care how long it takes. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Well, that's half the battle. If it is, we still have another half to finish. All of 
Lucas, starring in the role of Stefan Donner in the proudly we hail production of Prelude for Eva, will return in just a moment for the second act. You young men who just graduated from high school, listen to this. The United States Army needs intelligent young men to handle the thousands of important jobs opening up in your growing army. If you can qualify and come within the quota, you'll be sent to one of the Army's many technical training schools to study such interesting subjects as radio, radar, meteorology, mechanics, or electronics. The Army teaches you the know-how it takes to get ahead faster, and what's more, when you're in the Army, you'll wear the uniform that's the mark of a man the world over. So men, don't worry about your future now that you've finished high school. You'll find the answer to that important question at the nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Paul Lucas, in the role of Stefan Donner, we present the second act of Prelude for Eva. Oh. Oh. You startled me. Madam, I saw you standing here alone, and I thought to myself, the party is no place for anyone to be alone, especially someone as pretty as yourself. So I brought you this glass of champagne. Oh, thank you. It is Paul Roger 37. Very good for you. I, I, I have a friend named Willie who thinks Paul Roger 37 is the best of all. He, he would like you to ship some to his employer, Mr. West. <laughs> I don't blame him. Where is Willie? I, I don't know. He came to my apartment. I haven't... I, Later. I Smile. And mix with the crowd. What? Try and act like you belong here. Oh, you right. stand out like a sore thumb. Oh, it's been a pleasure, madam. Please excuse me. I, I seem to see a friend across the room. Well, Inspector, you said something about proving a point. <laughs> the party isn't over yet, Major. No, and if it goes on much longer, he'll advance with every woman here and talk to every man, some of them twice. Which is not in character. Hush, not in character. So what are you going to do about it? Arrest him because he's not in character? There. He's asked that young woman in the black gown to dance. Shall I seize them, Inspector, and 50 other women besides? Be still, Major. Go have another glass of champagne. Try and look useful, even if you are it. At exactly two o'clock, go into the room behind us. It's one of those glassed-in gardens. I, I know, I was there earlier. And no matter what happens after that, stay there. Stand by the last window on the left. Is, is something going to happen? Huh? <laughs> How charming. <laughs> Don't be frightened. Do you have what Willie gave you? Yes. Well, be ready to give it to me. Thank you, my dear. A very great pleasure. Thank you. Oh, two o'clock. Another half hour and we can go home and forget this nonsense. Major, you can... Hey, the lights! Oh, there's the lights! Hey, let me out of here! Hey, please, Major, quick, me! Here, here, what happened? Call it a diversion. Give me the papers. Here. All right, now get out of here. Go out into that crowd and have hysterics with the rest of them. But I'm... No but. You are a brave little girl, and I'm sorry there isn't time to thank you properly. As soon as things start to quiet down, leave. When you get outside, walk left to the end of the block, get in the car that is standing there. My men will take you home and see that you come to no harm. God bless you. Goodbye, and should you see Willie again, give him my regards. Goodbye, Herr Donner. Stephen, to you always. Now be gone. All right, let's go out of here. I want to get out of here. All right, all right. Calm down. No one is going to leave here until we get to the bottom of this. Half the people who were here have left already. Get that man's name, Major. Herr Donner, where have you been? Now, where do you think I've been, Inspector? Oh, that's right. On the been... moon? <laughs> <laughs> Silence! I asked you, Herr Donner, where have you been? Where were you when the lights went out? Well, 
if you must know, Inspector, I was in the father room combing my hair. <laughs> Ring. Oh, I, Ring. I beg your pardon, sir. I didn't hear you come in. Uh, was the party a success, sir? Uh, with the help of poor Roger 37, I managed. And how was your evening drink? Oh, I enjoyed myself. Drove around a bit, met a young girl. Uh, got her home quite safely. Ring? And at your age? Well, uh, yes, sir. I, I took the liberty of drawing a tub, sir. Yeah, so I see. I suppose you closed the door. I'd just as soon keep as much heat in as we can. We don't have much time, Ring. The hounds will be sniffing around in short order, or I've misjudged Tinko. I've got to do some fast composing and in the tub. Bring me a pile of music and a pencil. You stand outside. If you hear anyone coming, whistle a tune and whistle it loud. Did I manage the light successfully, sir? Beautifully. Was it difficult? Well, a piece of cake, sir. And, uh, what about the, uh, disturbance? <laughs> Your noisy but harmless balm did wonders for a potted palm where I mislaid it. Now listen, when they call, tell them I'm taking a bath. They will insist upon seeing me. Keep them away as long as you can. Every second counts now. Will the composition be difficult, sir? What kind of composing do you think Beethoven or Brahms would have done at three o'clock in the morning while sitting in a cold tub waiting for the police to break down the door? I'm sorry, sir, but the maestro does not wish to be disturbed. He doesn't wish to be disturbed. They're out of my way. You men take the room in there. Go over everything. Quickly now. Where is Herdana? Speak up, or I... Uh, he's taking a bath, sir. A bath? Well, we'll go join the great maestro in his tub. Show us the way before I show you my boot. You men take the bedroom. Oh, it's so much simpler in the infantry. Just a matter of pulling a trigger. Uh, uh, sir, there are some... Governor, open this door or I'll shoot the lock off. Oh, who the devil is out there? Open up! Well, Inspector, and in need of a bath. I've just finished mine. Major, I want this room taken apart, tile by tile. Well, if you really want it that much, I'll ask the hotel to give it to you. I advise you, Herr Donner, to keep your tongue buttoned. What is that in the pocket of your robe? Oh, uh, my hand, I believe. Inspector, Inspector, look what we found. If you are after music, I can give you a lot more of it. And what, may I ask, were you doing with all that in there? Oh, now, really, Inspector, I was reading it the same way you read the book, if you are able to read. They happen to be the scores for my concert in Dresden on Wednesday. Lorca, you and your men go over this stuff. You know what to look for. Take your time. Herr Donner and I are going to have a long talk. Well, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Your experts have been over the place from top to bottom. And the music? Lorca says it's all in order. This is the only piece he didn't recognize. Prelude by Stefan Donner. Hmm. An original composition, eh? Now, I'm getting weary of all this idiotic nonsense. You must forgive us our little whims. When did you write this uh, prelude? I wrote it last month, and if you'd like a copy of it, you may take it. I am playing for the first time Wednesday. Now, I've had enough of this. And if you and your buffoons don't get out of here and let me get some sleep, I promise you, you will read about this. Oh? Yes, oh. It might also, also interest you to know that your own General Holtz is making it a point to be on hand to hear me play in Dresden. When I tell him of this asinine treatment I have received at your hands, it's quite possible you'll hear about it in a manner that... General Holtz. In Inspector, uh, per perhaps... It, it... Uh, it may be, Herr Donner, that we have been... Uh bit tasty. It we... may well be, but I will let the general be the judge of that. I must say, see, you carried it off beautifully. The last trump took the game ring. Another minute and he would have kept the prelude. Oh, you certainly composed it quickly. I was inspired. Inspired by a girl whose name I don't even know. I, uh, <clears throat> believe she said it was, uh, Eva. Eva. Prelude for Eva, we'll call it. Written on a theme by Willy Brunner. Very good, sir. 
when we reach Dresden, you'll have some copies printed. Send one to our publisher, Mr. West, just in case he doesn't pick it up on the short wave. I don't know how far the concert will be broadcast. It's a very ingenious idea, sir. I never cease to wonder at it. Transmitting the written word into a musical code, and the music sounds so, uh, so authentic. <laughs> Rink, you are, you are wonderful. Uh, there's just one item I wondered about. What, what did you do with the original papers, the ones she gave you? Oh, come now, Ring. At the sound of your boyish whistle, I did the only thing I could do. They went uh, down the drain. Uh, <laughs> down the drain. Ah, uh, very good, sir. Very good. Our star, Paul Lucas, will return in a moment with a word about next week's show. Next time you see a soldier of your United States Army, take a good look at the uniform he wears. That Army uniform is the mark of a man, the unmistakable sign that its wearer has come up to the mark. And it's always been so, from the buff and blue of General Washington's Continentals to the uniform so proudly worn by the Army combat soldiers of today. The United States Army insignia has been worn by many generations of men. The men who faced with quiet courage the dark days of Valley Forge and Trenton, Chateau Thierry in the Argonne Forest, Bataan in the Bulge. The man who puts on the uniform of the United States Army joins the company of those stubborn Americans who never admitted they were licked. Go to your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station, have a talk with the recruiting sergeant, and enlist in the United States Army today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Paul Lucas. Prelude for Eva was written by DeWitt Cup. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and was directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Paul Lucas. We cordially invite you to be with us again over this same station next week for Proudly We Hail. Our story is entitled From West to East and Back Again. We hope you'll join us then. Until next week, goodbye. Goodbye.